tonight. APH sends parents and guardians a letter of possible COVID-19 exposure on a bus line for two local schools. News at night with Colette Linden. Good evening, I'm Colette Linden and welcome to News at Night. Kalgoma Public Health has contacted parents and guardians informing them of a possible exposure to COVID-19 and advising anyone who rode on Boisneau bus line number four in the morning or afternoon rides to Eastview Public School or St. Mary's French Emerging Catholic School on September the 9th and 10th that they may be identified as a high risk close contact. If your child falls in this category and is not fully vaccinated, your child must isolate and get tested before the 17th of September or immediately if your child develops symptoms. Shortly after 3 o'clock this morning, Sioux Fire Services responded to a large multi-story business on Bay Street. Upon arrival, crews located a fire on the fifth floor of the Quality Inn. Guests were evacuated from the building quickly while crews put out the flames. One of the guests we spoke with briefly said they were supposed to start work at 5.30, but couldn't envision that happening after the unscheduled wake-up call. Firefighters remain on scene for over two hours, clearing smoke, checking for extension, and cleaning up gear. Guests were allowed back into the hotel around 4.30 this morning. On Friday afternoon, Gooley Fire and Rescue, as well as a Weir's Fire Rescue, responded for a fully involved structure fire in Hayden. Upon arrival on a street in Rupert Acres, firefighters found a mobile home completely engulfed in flames. Dan Gray has the story. Around 2 p.m. Friday afternoon, Goulet Fire and Rescue, as well as a Weir's Fire Rescue, responded to a structure fire in Hayden. The fire consumed a mobile home in the Rupert Acres trailer park and left beloved pets dead. The family has since found temporary housing but is in need of nearly everything else. Donations have started to pour in and if you would like to donate, you can find the full story with details on how on our website. For Sue Online and on TV, I'm Dan Gray. The final week of the federal election campaign starts with a bump in the polls for the local Liberals. 338Canada.com reports a full two-point lead for Liberal Terry Sheehan as of Sunday, September the 12th, with 34% followed closely by Conservative Sonny Spina falling to 32%. Spina has seen the biggest drop after taking the lead for the majority of the campaign locally, as well as local PPC candidate Casper Mikowski has seen the biggest increase However, rising 8.6%, the largest increase of any local candidate. Marie Morin Strom continues to be in third place, falling from second when the campaign was kicked off. Sault Ste. Marie is seen as an NDP stronghold in the past, but as the federal NDP continue to slide, so does our local candidate. Interestingly enough, an online poll on the SueOnline.com homepage shows a different outcome. The poll is not scientific, but does show conservative Sonny Spina with 53% of the vote, followed by Liberal Terry Sheehan with just 30, and NDP with 11 of those who voted. PPC comes in at 6%. Advanced polling was conducted over the weekend. Mail-in ballots also begin this week. The election will be held Monday, September 20th, but a winner may not be decided for several days as the mail-in vote begins. Some high-ranking Ontario politicians and prominent health care organizations are issuing warnings ahead of a number of protests expected to take place at hospitals across our country today. An organization calling itself Canadian Frontline Nurses posted notices of silent vigils expected to take place in all 10 provinces, saying they're meant to critique public health measures put in place in order to curb the spread of COVID-19. Organizers say they want to take a stand against what they call tyrannical measures and government overreach, adding that they are not encouraging nurses to walk out on their shifts or abandon patients. Ontario Premier Doug Ford, whose province was among those targeted by similar past protests after he announced plans for proof of vaccine system, condemned the latest round on Sunday in a tweet describing such events as selfish, cowardly and reckless. Ontario is reporting 600 new cases of COVID-19 today, a decline compared to Sunday's count, which saw 784 cases. There are six additional deaths being reported. Two of those were more than one month ago, but due to a data cleanup reported today. The number of resolved cases are higher than the new infections, with 627 people recovered. Toronto is home to 114 new cases. Peel is seeing 84, with the region of York at 67. Health Minister Christine Elliott says 475 of the new cases are in those who are not vaccinated or have not yet received a vaccination status. 125 are fully vaccinated. Over the weekend, APH reported two new cases of COVID-19, both from Sault Ste. Marie and area. 
Both identified cases are self-isolating and believed to have been in close contact. In the past 14 days, the Algoma region has seen positive cases from Sault Ste. Marie, North Algoma and Central and East Algoma. A total of 447 cases of COVID-19 has been confirmed by APH since the beginning of the pandemic. Well, we had a pretty nice day today, all things considered, but we have a big change coming for our Tuesday. I will show you exactly what I mean right after this. On TV News, supported by Tenaris Algoma Tubes. Kickstart your career. Tenaris is rapidly growing in Sault Ste. Marie and looking for individuals interested in rewarding production and technician roles. If you are ready for a progressive career opportunity with benefits in advanced manufacturing, then please send your resume to resumes at Tenaris.com. On TV News, supported by the Refinery, the leader in women's fitness and transformations, 624 Wellington Street West in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Call 705-255-8895 for more information. Family owned and operated, AG Quinnell Well Drilling has been serving Sault Ste. Marie and surrounding areas since 1968. For a free estimate, call 705-779-3909. AG Quinnell Well Drilling, available for all your water needs. 1944, Second Line West, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. AG Quinnell Well Drilling. Call 705-779-3909 for a free estimate today. On TV News, supported by James Seaton Mortgage Specialist. Your new home doesn't come with mortgage advice. I do. Call James Seaton Mortgage Specialist, RBC, 705-975-1519. And welcome back, everyone. Well, we have some active weather to tell you about. It's actually right around the Great Lakes. It's showing up pretty nicely here on the satellite shot. First of all, we have this boundary here, which is giving some heavy rain to the Detroit area, Southern Ontario. We don't have to worry about that boundary. We have to worry about this monster coming in late tonight. We're probably not gonna see the rain develop until Tuesday morning, but all of this is gonna start coming our way during the overnight tonight. So giving us cloudy skies. We are gonna stay though fairly warm for the next couple of days. We will take a look at the uh, radar just to show you where that storm is right now. It's advancing right through Minnesota. It's uh, expected to be here in about eight to nine hours. Uh, and then we're gonna start seeing some heavier rain showers uh, come in for Tuesday. And keep in mind, this is traveling up a jet stream, which means it's almost like a, a transport truck driving up the mile hill. It's gonna slow down a little bit, which means prolonged showers. Uh, for the Sioux and area for our day on Tuesday. We'll take a look at temperatures for the overnight tonight. Not bad, 11 degrees here in the Sioux, 9 degrees in Wawa, a little cooler as always usually in Timmins at 7 and 10 degrees in Sudbury. Uh, and we're, we're going to have some half decent temperatures for our day tomorrow. Actually, it's going to feel like a summer thunderstorm or, th or summer rain shower because we're going to see some humidity build into the area as well. We'll take a look at the systems map. I'll show you exactly what we mean. So we have this high pressure system which continues to pump up the warm air into this low pressure system. This is all, as you can see, making its way into the Great Lakes. And uh, this is also some humid air too. Also an important thing tomorrow, we're going to have our wing winds shift from the east to the southwest, to the northwest, all within a 16 hour period. So it's gonna be somewhat of a variable wind day as well. So let's take a look now at our forecast for the next 12 hours for your evening. Uh, mainly sunny, we're gonna see those clouds of course fill in during the evening, but for the most part, it's gonna be a fairly nice evening at 17 degrees, 11 degrees, as I said overnight with some clouds filling in. And tomorrow morning, don't know if they're going to be right when you wake up, but the showers should be developing in the morning. Uh, could see a thunderstorm as well. Temperatures, not bad. We're, it's 18 degrees, but it's going to feel closer to 27 because of the humidity. And then uh, we hold on to some temp half decent temperatures for most of this week. Uh, but 
we do have a system coming in for Friday and Saturday, and we also have a system now coming in for early next week, which could also give us a pretty good soaker. Uh, keep in mind, we're gonna get around 25 to 30 millimeters of rain from the system for tomorrow. So it's gonna be a pretty wet Tuesday. That's your weather right now. Jacob is taking another day off. Imagine that. So we're gonna send it right back to Colette right after this break. On TV News, supported by Tammy Ovi. Are you looking for an agent who confidently knows the culture and community of Sault Ste. Marie? Call Tammy Ovi, 705-971-0171. On TV News, supported by United Way. Help make your community a better place. Show your local love and donate today. The City of Sault Ste. Marie is launching its new Arts and Cultural Assistance Program. This program replaces the existing Cultural Financial Assistance Program with the first intake of applications opening on the 24th of September at 8 o'clock in the morning and closing on the 29th of October at 5 p.m. The ACAP program will offer arts, culture and heritage funding through several streams including project operational seed, festival events, and cultural diversity to local and area arts, culture, and heritage organizations, collective groups, and individuals who practice in and or serve the city of Sault Ste. Marie. The new program will also offer two intakes to better support the needs of the arts, culture, and heritage sector. Details on this program, including guidelines, application process, and other supporting documents can be found on the city's website. When Council meets for the first time in over one month tonight, they will be facing a moderately sized agenda containing some big plans. The big ticket items, including a vaccination policy and a plaza pre-spend, are mixed in with scheduled conversations around a Welcome to Sault Ste. Marie initiative and our addictions and mental health capacity in the city. You will be able to watch all of the Council meeting on SiouxOnline.com, on TV and, the Facebook, and our Facebook page. You can also find the full agenda on our website. The city's shopping cart bylaw that outlines a comprehensive system for the regulation of shopping carts in our city is now in effect. As part of the bylaw, business owners who provide shopping carts to their customers are required to develop and file a plan with the city's Director of Public Works and Engineering Services, identifying which measures it will take to keep the carts on their property or to retrieve them. The plan must include details of the business owner's operation and timeline of how carts shall be ret retrieved and returned to the business owner's premises. A description of the owner's carts included in any easily identifiable features and the contact person and information for the business owner who will be called if carts are found off site. The bylaw outlines various details for businesses, including customers removing shopping carts, from a business owner's property. The bylaw also provides enforcement tools in the event of non-compliance. That includes written notice to the business owner to collect their cart and a fine of up to $5,000 per day for non-compliance. If the business owner fails to comply, the city may collect and remove the cart at the owner's expense. The shopping cart bylaw went into effect on the 7th of September. Businesses must provide their plans to the city's director of public works at pwt at cityssm.on.ca for review. On September the 10th, officers with patrol services charged 55-year-old Rosario Carello with impaired driving due to alcohol and or drugs. Around 6.20 p.m., officers attended the 1200 block of People's Road after receiving reports of a single vehicle collision. Upon arrival, officers observed a vehicle in the ditch and a man, later identified as the accused, standing in the area. Upon speaking with the accused, officers developed grounds to believe his ability to operate a motor vehicle was impaired by alcohol. He was read the, the approved screening device demand and provided a sample registering a fail result. As a result of this, he was arrested. He later provided two breast samples into an approved device and registered two failed results. He is charged with impaired driving and was released on an appearance notice and is scheduled to appear in court on November the 1st. 
On September 11th, officers with patrol services charged 39-year-old Daniel Caruso with impaired driving. At around 8.25 p.m., officers responded to reports of a possible impaired driver in the area of St. George's Avenue. Officers located the vehicle matching the description of the report parked and running in a parking lot in the 300 block of St. George's Avenue. Upon approaching the vehicle, officers observed the accused asleep behind the wheel of the running vehicle. Officers were able to wake him up and upon speaking with him, developed grounds to believe his ability to operate a motor vehicle was impaired by alcohol. He was arrested and later provided breath samples into an approved device registering fail results. He is charged with impaired driving, released on an appearance notice, and is scheduled to appear in court on November the 1st. Due to COVID-19, a long-awaited ceremony was finally held at the Legion over the weekend. A ceremony on Saturday was nearly two years in the making due to ongoing COVID restrictions. Royal Canadian Legion Branch 25 was finally able to recognize its members and volunteers for their service to the club for the years of 2020 and 2021. Multiple awards and certificates were handed out, including ones to an individual who had 50 years of service to the Legion. Another individual was recognized for selling over 200 Legion calendars. A light lunch was served by the Women's Auxiliary after the ceremony concluded. For Sue Online and on TV, I'm Dan Gray. The Huron Superior Catholic District School Board and the Algoma District School Board are pleased to announce that an agreement has been reached with a local provider for internet-based radio broadcasts of high school sports beginning with football and girls basketball games. Sioux Sports Radio is an internet radio station that will broadcast junior and senior level games which began on Saturday, September 11th with the junior football game at 10 a.m. between St. Mary's and Superior Heights. Due to COVID-19 restrictions and upon the recommendation of APH, both boards agree that at this time, spectators will not be allowed at sporting events. Both school boards also recognize that allowing games to be aired on Sioux Sports Radio is a good compromise for keeping our students, staff, as well as the community safe while allowing those who are interested an opportunity to follow high school sports and their favorite teams. Despite the rainy weather, a fundraising event was held for three injured motorcyclists on Sunday and the organizers were pleased with the turnout despite the weather. Brian Nadone, chairperson for the organization which was formed for these three, was able to fill us in a little bit on what was going on. Dan Gray has the full story. Antique Cars met Burley Motorcycles for a fundraiser over the weekend. Brian Naden was one of the organizers for the event and told on TV what it was all about. Supports on my injured riders that uh, were severely injured in an accident back in July. Um, right now, just a, basically a group of friends that came together uh, to organize the event uh, to help support the families uh, as they're going through their rehabilitation and whatnot. Of the three riders injured in July, two of them remain in hospital. Organizers would like to thank the multiple businesses who helped make the fundraiser a success. For Sue Online and On TV, I'm Dan Gray. That's your On TV news for Monday, September the 13th. On behalf of Craig Huckerby, I'm Colette Linden. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you tomorrow.